In the last episode, we talked about journal entries which is the step 2 of the accounting process. Today, we're going to have the step 3 and step 4 of the accounting cycle. For those who have not yet seen the previous videos, their links are on the description below. And to those who are finished, then let's continue. Step 3 is posting the journal entries to the ledger or the t-accounts. For that, we need the journal entries from the last video. So these are the journal entries. So what is a t-account? The t-account is just like this one, although we're going to add a horizontal line below. The account titles used by the company in their chart of accounts must each have a t-account. For example, this t-account right here is owned by the account title cash. So, the journal entries pertaining to the cash must be posted in this T account. But how do we do that? It's right here. Please focus on the amounts which are colored red because they are related to cash, right? So as you notice, there are debit and credit entries. For example, this one right here says debit cash of 100,000. So how do we post this? You post it on the left side of the T account because the left side is for the debits and of course the opposite side which is the right side is for the credits which is why this credit 2 3 in letter b 15000 in letter c credit 10000 in letter d will be posted here so 2 3 15000 10000 and this 30000 and another 30000 and another 19750 and then there is a debit of 80,000 so you put it on the left side and another 40,000 and the last credit cash 25,000 will also be on the right side so that's how you post after posting all the entries related to cash you need to total the amounts in the debits and the credits so you can add all the debits then you will get 220,000 and the credits will total 132,050 pesos you need to get the difference of these two because remember cash debits are for cash inflows and cash credits are decreases or disbursements of cash right so the difference is the cash balance which is in this case it's 87950 and it is found on the debit side because here the debit totals are greater than the credit totals so that's how you post journal entries to the t account and since there are still other account titles not yet posted like this miscellaneous expense and the prepaid rent and many others, you need to make a T account for each of them and it will look like this. And then post these amounts. Of course, you focus on the black colored ones because the red ones have already been posted here. And it will look like this. After that, we have to get the balances of the accounts just like what we did here in the cash account and it will look like this. So as you can see, I have separated the accounts based on their normal balance. Actually, the assets, the withdrawal and various expense accounts are here because they have debit as their normal balance. And of course, the capital, the liabilities as well as the revenue accounts are here because their normal balance is credit. So why did I do that? It is because before you go to step 4, you need to be sure that all the debit balances like the balance of this cash, this withdrawal, and the various expenses is equal to the credit balances. So if you total this, you will have 230,000 and of course there will be no problem because the total credits is also 230,000. And that's it for this slide but before we go to step 4, I'd like to emphasize two things and that is coming right up next. The first that I would like to emphasize is the complete ledger. Because the t-account that I have introduced a while ago is not complete, meaning this is not enough. So you have to put other details like for example the date of the transaction. Example, this cash inflow or debit 100,000, when did this happen? The answer should be the date. So you should put the date here. For example, the date for this cash inflow is 1820XX. Of course, 
other postings should also have their own corresponding dates. Another is that you must also add the transaction descriptions like this one. This cash inflow happened because of what? I don't know if you can still remember but this happened because of the initial investment of the owner, right? And of course, this 2, 3, 15,000 and these credits happened because you have paid for business permits and licenses. You have also paid for advance rent as well as you have purchased and partially paid the supplies. You also have purchased office equipment and you paid for salaries of the employees as well as you paid for utilities and you have this 80,000 because the customers paid in advance and another 40,000 because you receive cash from customers for the services you've already rendered and the last credit of 25,000 happened because the owner withdrawn from the business if you can still recall the complete journal entry does not only include the debit and the credit and its amounts, right? There is also an explanation of transaction. That explanation and these descriptions right here must coincide. Now, let's go to the last additional detail which is the reference. The reference answers the question, where does the posted amounts can be verified in the journal? For example, this posting of 100,000 is related to this journal entry, right? So what page can this journal entry be found in the general journal book? Because the journal entries are usually recorded in a general journal book. The answer to that is the reference. So this reference number in the example, this GJ-P1 is actually general journal page 1. Of course, the other postings must also have their own references. So that's it for the complete ledger. The second that I would like to emphasize is more like an additional knowledge and it is about subsidiary ledger. Subsidiary ledgers are the breakdown of a general ledger account. What does it mean? It would be easier if we go directly to the example. Example, you have an accounts receivable of 1 million because you sold your goods or services to customer A, B, and C on credit or on account. Logically, of course, collectible from each of your customers should be monitored individually, right? So how to do that? Of course, by opening a subsidiary ledger for each of them. We have, for example, AR from A, 400,000, B, which is worth 300,000, and C for another 300,000 which should total 1 million, which is also the total of the general ledger account accounts receivable. That is why I told you that subsidiary ledgers are the breakdown of a general ledger account. Subsidiary ledgers can also be made for other accounts like for example, accounts payable and others. And that's it for the ledger. And by the way, the posting of these journal entries to the ledger is also technically known as classification of transactions or simply classification. Let's go now to step 4 which is the preparation of the unadjusted trial balance. And let me tell you straight, this is just the listing of the account titles and their balances in the ledger. And it will look like this. If you remembered, in the T-account discussion we had a while ago, we have a cash balance of 87,950, right? On the debit. And other debits for supplies of 20,000, prepaid rent of 15,000, office equipment of 30,000, let's withdrawal of 25,000, salaries expense of 30,000, utilities expense of 19,750, and miscellaneous expense of 2300 on the credits we have accounts payable of 10000 unearned service revenues of 80000 and let's capital of 100000 we also have credit on the service revenues of 40000 and if you notice accounts receivable accumulated depreciation and other accounts are still zero since they were not yet used in these journal entries but why was it included in here? It is because you need to consider all the account titles used by the company in their chart of accounts. And since in the last video, 
I included a list of account titles for our illustrative problem so all of those that are included in there are also included in here. Don't worry, these unused accounts will be utilized in the next episode when we talk about adjustments. Let's go back to this one. To finish this, we need to total all the debits and we're gonna get 230,000 which is also the balance of all the credits. Take note that the totals has a double underline which we all call the double rule. So that's it for step 4. But before we end this video, I would like to introduce to you the worksheet because actually the next step is the completion of worksheet. The 10 column worksheet aside from the column of these account titles is composed of the first and the second column is for the unadjusted trial balance. The third and the fourth column is for the adjustments. Column 5 and column 6 is for the adjusted trial balance. Column 7 and column 8 is for the income statement. And the last two columns is for the balance sheet. Other parts of the worksheet are the company's name in the center as well as the word worksheet under it and of course the date. To complete this, you just need to fill up the adjustments columns and that would be on the next episode. So stay tuned. And if this helped, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. We are near 1000 subscribers. So if you have something to say, please leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.